Hi everyone, welcome to episode 48 of Woolen Spinning. My name is Rachel and I can be found pretty much everywhere as well for pearls. Please excuse the very short episode this week. We are fighting the plague in our house. I'm quite sick and I just wanted to pop in and say hello and do the giveaway for um, from my friend Katrina for, from Crafty Jack's Boutique on Etsy. We were giving away this month, um, throughout November, we were giving away the Rainbow Gradient Nest that she had very generously offered. This is uh, two ounces of a beautiful gradient set and it's all uh, labeled with which order to spin it in. And with it comes a um, lotion bar from um, I think it's La Viche. Um, this one is in the Shea Butter uh, scent, which is my favorite. And so we are going to mail this out to one lucky winner. I did draw from random.org. Um, we had 54 entries and I drew number post number 42. This came from the November episode thread. Thank you to everybody who entered. Post number 42 was Barb from Canada, BJB. So Barb, if you could get in touch with me. On Ravelry, I'm well for pearls. If you could please send me your mailing address, I would really appreciate that and I will get that into the mail to you. Congratulations. We have a couple of um, alongs going on in the group right now. We have the blast off along, which there's only a few more weeks to go before Christmas and New Year's. So if you've got some projects that you're wanting to get off your needles and get done, please, please head over there and get some motivation and inspiration. I have two projects to share with you today that are from that along and um, I hope that motivates you to get your stuff done. We also have the Zero to Hero Spackle for 2016 wrapping up in a couple of weeks. We will be carrying this on into 2017, but I'll start a whole new thread and it'll be a whole new thing. So if you have finished your projects, please get them into the FO thread. That is a chatter free thread um, and also share them in the regular thread so that we can all ooh and ah. And to those who've already finished, congratulations, because this is big stuff to go all the way from raw un um the raw fiber spinning knitting or weaving and having something to show for yourself at the end of the year that's huge so congratulations to those who've already finished there may or may not be some prizes in a couple weeks that are may or may not be awarding so hint hint nudge nudge get your stuff into those two threads color studies started in october of 2016 when we reached one of our patreon tiers Karen has finished dyeing two colorways for us to choose from and she has two different bases for us to choose from for fiber. Those who are Patreon supporters will be able to order their fiber first and then she will open it up to everybody else. So I will keep you posted about that. That should be happening sometime in December and into January. You'll be able to pre-order your fiber. So to anybody who participated in the color studies, got their photos in there, thank you so much. I have unlocked the thread so you can go ahead and chatter and try to figure out which photos that she chose. And that will be revealed very soon. Thank you to everybody who is a Patreon subscriber. Um, you guys bring the show out weekly and are the supports behind the show. There will be some changes in the new year and I will share more about that over the next couple of weeks. But December's Fiber Club and January's Fiber Club have actually been prepared. I've done the um, carded prep but the dyeing and the colors have come from my friend Katrina. So for those of you who know Katrina um, through the as a co-moderator in the group on Ravelry and also through the Slack channel, she's uh, Crafty Jacks on the Slack channel and Kalem One on Ravelry. Um, we have some exciting news to share with you that will start in the new year. So please stay tuned for that. And like I said, a little bit of a teaser, there will be a couple of changes, but I'm very excited about Fiber Club and I will be hopefully mailing that out next week. Sorry for Charlotte, we're still quarantining her from her big surgery back in the fall. She still has to spend all of her time in the office, so you're hearing her in the background whining and not understanding why she's getting pets because I'm in here. <laughs> um, I'm only going to show a few projects today. Like I said, I'm really not feeling well. You probably can hear it in my voice. Um, I just don't. Um, these viruses are brutal these days and I have a throbbing headache. So. I'm going to be really brief and just share with you what I've been working on and then next week we'll do a proper show and I'll do the review of the yarn and texture book that I've been putting off um, just because I haven't felt the energy to be able to delve into that with you guys. So in the meantime I do have one spin in progress um, and I've been mostly stalled with everything else. This is um, November of 2016 Sweet Georgia Fiber Club. 
you may remember me sharing the Wensleydale that was this same color way, way earlier in the month and I knit a pair of fingerless mitts with them which I'll slide a photo in here of them. They turned out beautifully. There was a dye problem with the Wensleydale when it hit the water for the bath um, to set the yarn and set the twist a lot of the dye came out and it severely faded the yarn so Felicia because she's incredibly generous and really tries to make wrong um, make right anything that goes wrong she re-dyed it on superwash BFL and nylon for people so I'm actually spinning an extra fine three ply sock yarn I suspect I'll finish this sometime in December but until then um, I'm just going to keep working on it and when I feel better, I'll, I'll pick it up again. So this is almost the first bobbin finished. And um, the colorway was False Creek, which was inspired by a local neighborhood here in Vancouver. So that's beautiful. I'm doing it on my Lendrum just because I really love spinning autopilot on my Lendrum. And that is that yarn. And I'll share it with you as I continue on. For the blast off along, I mentioned that I had some projects that I've been working on for that spin along, knit along, whatever you want to do. You can use commercial yarn, you can do whatever. It's just to get stuff done for if you've got gifts or if you've got stuff that you want to get finished. You will recognize Mike's socks. I'll again insert some photos of what they actually look like because it's hard to see on the podcast when I'm just sharing them and holding them up like this. Um... These are 100% Cheviot. I did make some notes about these. So I used the Turkish cast on. I cast on 20 stitches. So that was 10 stitches per needle. I used 2.75 millimeter needles to knit these with using the magic loop method. Um, I did deviate from my normal heel, what I normally use. And I will talk about more of that when I can. This is sort of a little bit of a, I wouldn't call it a secret, but I'm sort of, we're developing some stuff for um, me and Katrina for some upcoming patterns and this will probably be in that pattern. It's just a very straightforward short row heel. Um, and then I knit up the leg. He doesn't like his socks too, too high. So I did knit up and then I did a good three inches of ribbing at the top. Um, the fabric is incredibly dense. It was very, it was borderline unpleasant to knit with. There was parts, times when I actually put them aside because they were hurting my hands to knit with. I look for this in my sock yarn because I want, um, when I spin for socks, I want the finished fabric to be quite dense and I want the yarn to be quite highly twisted. As I was knitting, um, the yarn was twisting on itself. The interesting thing is there isn't any biasing up here in the ribbing and I haven't washed these yet. Um, there's no obvious biasing in the ribbing or anything. So they weren't that highly twisted that they would actually bias the knitting and actually like, um, make them not sit properly but they were definitely slightly unpleasant to knit with and like I said I look for that in my yarns because that means there's enough twist in the socks that hopefully they'll um, survive a lot of wear and tear. Interesting story I have a pair of purple Cheviot socks that I wear and wear and wear and wear. They're also two ply. I talked about them on the podcast quite a long time ago. One sec. And they got thrown by accident by myself, I can't blame anyone else, um, into the washer on hot with a cold water rinse. And I thought for sure when I was pulling them out of the wash that they were dead and that there was no way I was going to fix them. Um, I thought for sure, even with Cheviot's unreliable felting properties, I thought for sure that they would felt and be wrecked. I'm wearing them right now and they're fine. <laughs> so they're definitely fuzzed together. Like... They've definitely fulled quite badly, um, but they didn't shrink this way, and so I can still wear them. It took a couple hours for them to kind of stretch back out this, like width-wise, but length-wise, they were totally fine. So, go figure. So that's my story about my Cheviot socks. I've said for a long time how much I love Cheviot for socks, and it still continues to be one of my absolute most favorite um, fibers to spin and to knit with. I actually would really like to spin a Cheviot sweater next year. Um, I want to replace my Acer cardigan um, because I've worn it so much that it's actually wearing out. So I think um, I might actually do that and that might be my spackle project for next year for the Zero to Hero for 2017. What? The other project that I'm working on, just one sec. James, just one minute, okay? The kids are watching TV, they're sick too. Um, the other project for the blast off that I am working on, like I said, there was almost not a show this week and I really wanted to get something out to you guys. So this is a fast show. 
I am working on the Little Scallops hat. This is old, old hand spun from Savvy Skeins. She used to be called um, You and Me. They're down in Texas. Allie is lovely. Um, she does mostly yarn now. She doesn't do a lot of fiber anymore, but this was her Ophelia colorway. I'm sure she would dye it up for you if you contacted her and asked her. Um, and I'm actually knitting this. This is a Christmas gift for my niece. Although um, I really wanted two toques, one for Nora and one for my niece, Claire. Um, and now I'm kind of thinking I'm not going to have enough yarn to do the second toque. So I might rip this out because it's only about two hours of knitting um, and knit the scallops up a bit higher and then switch to the color um, so that the toques can be the same and Nora and Claire can have the same toque um, because I was also hoping to get some striped mittens out of this yarn as well. Um, and I have quite a bit of yarn, but not enough to do all of that. So I think I'm going to have to rip back to here and knit more, knit the scallops up here more and save some of that yarn. So I'll keep you posted. I might also switch it. So this might be the color and this might be the white. Um, you'll see next week because this is sort of what I'm working on until they're done. Um, but I love this pattern. I've knit it before. It's little scallops. I can't remember who the author is, but I'll put it down below. And... Um, yeah, I'm loving how that turned out. This is old, old hand spun. I Navajo plied it. It's quite uneven, but you can't tell in the knitted stitches. Um, it's very dense compared to how I spin now. So it's kind of interesting working with old hand spun because um, I wonder how different it would be if I spun it now because I spun this back in 2014. Um, yeah, but I love Allie's colors and I loved this and I, I ordered it from her as soon as I saw it go up on Instagram. So um, that was years ago now. Um, so it was fun to kind of stash dive and pull this out and to work with it. So that is that toque and hopefully it'll be, the two will be done next week and I'll be able to show you what I ended up deciding on. The cream is actually commercial yarn. It's just Cascade 220 Sport. Um, it's a super wash. I'm actually not sure if this is super wash or not. If this merino was, ha was super wash. I looked back on my Ravelry notes and it doesn't say anything anywhere about it being super wash. Um, so I might contact Allie and see if she remembers. I know it was a, it was her st stellar base. So it was Merino, Mulberry Silk and Mulberry Silk and Sparkle. So yeah, that's how that's turning out. And it's really fun. It's just something totally different for me. And, um, I just have to figure out how I can make that yarn stretch a little bit so that the girls can have a matching set of, cause they're the same age. They're only two months apart. Um, I really wanted them to have matching mitts and toques so for their Christmas gifts. So I'll keep you posted on how that goes. I'm going to start losing my voice and my headache's actually gotten quite a bit worse. So I'm going to say goodbye. Um, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Um, I hope it's full of fiber and spinning and knitting and weaving and whatever all else you do. And until next week, happy spinning. Bye guys.